Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books, the podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, comics we want to read, and everything in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Planes Trains, Trains, and, and Comic, comic books. books. Today we are doing uh, one of our favorite creators, one of the one of John's new newest favorite creators. Definitely. Uh, one of my favorite all-time creators, um, Terry Moore's uh, book, Rachel Rising. And uh, for all of you who don't know who Terry Moore is, you should definitely go check out any of his books. They're all great. But uh, we re- we did uh, one of his books called Moto Girl early on in the podcast. I think it's number nine um, in the episodes. But uh, and that you know, is now one of my absolute favorite comics of all time. I yeah, John recently told me he reads it. He's read it more than once. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've gone back on and his own, it. which is crazy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so Terry Moore, great artist, great writer. He is an indie comics creator, as indie as you could be. He publishes his own stuff, prints his own stuff. And, uh, you know, gets in the comic book store somehow. I don't know how he does it, but, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, he did a horror book or like, I don't know if it's horror, but it's, it's definitely like on the darker side, uh, a book of like, it's a supernaturally kind of horror book, um, called Rachel rising in 2011. And, um, this is a series that was like 42 issues long um but uh we read the first story arc which is issues one through six it's called the shadow of death and uh yeah that's basically uh like the the basic intro of it what'd you what'd you kind of what'd you think going into this what were you thinking it was going to be about john did you think anything from the cover or anything or no i mean the cover it was just kind of ominous and creepy because it's like a black shadow of a female character laying on her back and like some red mist coming out of her mouth i thought maybe it was like about death or like maybe the yeah someone dies obviously or something but i i I didn't i didn't even read like synopsis before you were just like we should read this it's good terry moore i was like okay that's cool i I really like (laughs) that was good enough for you (laughs) yeah basically terry moore say no more all right cool (laughs) um that's what i want to hear that's what everybody should read terry moore along with darwin cook he is one of my top top favorite writers so um yeah so right away this comic starts off with a bang um first off the first like i don't know 10 or 15 pages don't have any dialogue or any talking at all in them it's just uh panels letting the art speak for itself letting his beautiful art speak for itself by the way because he's a really good artist and uh, everything in this is black and white too all of his comics are in black and white um so that kind of adds to the creepiness anyway just in general black and white comics are usually creepier uh for the most part and so uh right away we see this woman walking through the forest or the woods of this area we don't know where it is I wasn't sure if she was, like, jogging at first um, because it made it look like, oh, maybe she's jogging. But then she kind of, like, has her hands in her pockets. So I'm like, oh, she, okay, she's not jogging. (laughs) But she, like, comes under this, like, dry riverbed. And you see all these, like, birds, like, ah, like, uh, circling something in the dry riverbed. And then she's staring at the ground. And then all of a sudden some, like, fire or something happens it looks like a leaf falls and then it like kind of like bursts into flames as it hits the ground yeah and then fingers pop up yeah and so and so like this uh this person starts coming out of the ground and you're like what the fuck and like his body you get like pretty much legs and arms and then there's like a woman who's like clawing, clawing her way out of the ground um and the person that was jogging or walking she's just staring like blankly at this so she's not surprised at all Obviously, she knew this was going to happen when she got there. And so she's, we're going to call her the mysterious woman because she is unnamed in this comic. Yes. But uh, she runs through this whole uh, first story arc uh, without a name. So, so um, but yeah, she's creepy as fuck. What did you think of her, John? She's... Yeah, I don't know. Like, so she kind of looks a little similar to the uh, first character, but there's big dis- distinctions as we go on about some key details of look. But yeah, like every time she pops up, she's just kind of there. She doesn't talk much. She has only has a few like key lines. Right. But she's just, yeah, she's usually just there on looking at something really creepy and crazy going on. So, I, I mean, as we go along, I assume that she has something to do with things. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, like her and her expression is usually also blank. Like it's not usually very, like she gets a smirk on occasion. But yeah, for the most part, it's very much just like 
glazed over. And yeah, see. just like I expect all of this to happen. Yeah. So, so this lady is is uh, not the not the mysterious one, but the woman who was in the the bed of the the riverbed. She she's clawed her way out, and she has like a kind of like a cocktail dress on, like a nice like a night out dress that you're gonna go to like a club with, and um, all of a sudden, like this, uh, I'll say a spirit or some some kind of smoke comes into her and she gets like um like a vision of of the night before so like like it's cool the way they show it like she's looking up at the sky and there's birds flying and then the next panel is the same sky but it's dark and there's a moon and there's someone in a mask strangling her and she's and like she's having flashbacks of like the the night before she thinks she's like what the fuck what happened and then she like looks up and there's no woman there anymore and she's just on her own in this dry riverbed. And so um, she, like, promptly walk, walks herself home. <laughs> she's, like, through, she has to walk through all this shit. She gets, like, uh, she's, she's walking on the side of the road. She gets picked up by some guy who sees her. And he's, like, way too, like, uh, like pushy, I guess, about, like, hey, do you need any help? Can I help you out? Yeah. You know, well, I mean, I, you saw a woman, like, covered in, like, yeah. mud and dirt. But she's like barefoot walking on the side of the road. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think so. I think he's just like, whoa, like, do you need to go to the hospital? Like, yeah, what is going on? That's true. And he's also one of like the least creepiest guys or he's not creepy at all in this towards her. So most of the guys in this are pretty creepy and weird, though. So yeah, most of them yeah, have a little creepiness. To him. He didn't seem to have any uh, hatefulness or anything in him or <laughs> or like ulterior motives. So, but like, yeah, he just seemed like really like he just didn't want to listen to her being like, I'm fine. He was like, no, yeah, I think she's like, just to, take me home. Yeah. And so he takes her home and she's like, you know, he's like, do you want me to come back and check on you? And she just slams the door in his face. And then um, she like, uh, I, I don't know if you no noticed this. I'm sure you did. All the, all the animals that like come in contact with her now are like scared, scared of her or like want to bark at her or run away. Yeah. Like she walks through her door and it's definitely, I mean, it's her place. She's got a key or whatever. Yeah. So she walks in the door and the. There's like the cat was like in the window all curled up and she comes in the cat like looks over and like hisses and like runs away and she's like, okay, cat, why are you being weird? And yeah. And so like that's a, a thing that happens through the rest of the comic too. And she like promptly just takes a shower. Like I got to get all this dirt and shit off me and everything. So she takes a shower. Uh, she like starts remembering more as she's looking at herself afterwards in the shower. She's looking in the mirror. She sees she's got like a, a strangulation mark on her neck all the way around. And it looks pretty gnarly. Um, and then her eyes are like super bloodshot. Like the whites of her eyes are completely red. Like all these blood vessels burst in her eyes or whatever. So yeah. uh, I don't know much about strangulation deaths, but apparently when you get strangled, it's possible that your uh, blood vessels burst in your eyeballs. Yep. And you get I've, red eyes. I've watched it enough Law and Order for to to tell you. <laughs> yeah. That yes, that is definitely a common thing. Which, ah. which Law and Order? Regular SVU. or SVU? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the the really intense ones, unfortunately. Yes, and uh, but that she gets more flashbacks of like someone with a wire or like a rope or something strangling her, and then she like sits down and like tries to remember like what exactly happened last night, because um, to her it's just like this was. This was only last night or whatever, and um, and all she, all she knows is she woke up in the dirt, covered in dirt. So that was weird, and she has like flashbacks of someone strangling her, but she tries to remember what happened, and she remembers going to see her friend Jet, who's like a mechanic, like a car mechanic, and uh, who's also a musician, I guess, and like how they were supposed to go out that night, and uh, and then like. She's like, okay, Jet, that's who I was hanging out with that night, so let me go see Jet. So she drives to her house, and when she gets there, like, Jet's not there, but there's, like, uh, a weird person on the stoop or whatever, like, this big, big fat guy. I don't know, he kind of looks like brother he, is or something. Yeah, I was like, he kind of looked Hawaiian to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but maybe it's her dad or something. I don't know, because uh, he's got freckles on his face, and Jet also has freckles on her face. And so I was like, oh, maybe it's her dad or something. But then... Um, so Jet is uh, not at home, but the people who see her, like, I guess it's maybe her dad and her mom, are like, wait, who are you? And she's like, I'm Rachel. You know, you know, I'm Rachel. And uh, she's like, 
they're, they're like, you're not Rachel. You don't look like Rachel. Yeah, your like, eyes look weird. Yeah, like you're you, you look too, like something's weird with you. You know, it's like it's almost like they don't re- recognize her because um, she doesn't have the same like feel. Almost not that th- not that her face doesn't look the same other than her eyes, but that like it is a theme that like people do not recognize her when she like meets them again. And then it's like it's I want to say it's kind of like uh, with her spirit not the same or whatever like the life left her body or whatever so it's kind of like she seems unfamiliar to them even though her face might look the same other than the bloodshot eyes that's how i kind of read it when i was yeah this. and so um but basically she's like well, where is she like uh you know she's like oh she's playing at the club and and uh rachel's like what like it's wednesday she never plays on a wednesday and she's like no it's friday so that's when we find out oh it's actually been like two or three days since she went out with uh, uh, Jet on Tuesday night. So it's Friday night now. Uh, so that's how long she had been, like, in the ground. Yeah. So that's super creepy. And that's how the first issue ends. So it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then the the second issue pretty much starts, like, right after that. And she's, like, driving up to uh, a mortuary. And um, it says it's the Underwood Mortuaries on the, on the sign of this place. And she drives up. She goes to the back entrance. Um, she like there's like a buzzer on the back entrance, and it says like she clicks it, and it's like who is it? And then she says it's me, Rachel. And then it like clicks open, no problems. So you're like, oh, this person knows Rachel. And then um, she's she's calling out to someone named Johnny, like, hey Johnny, where are you? And then we see like Johnny is the mortician, or I, is that what they're called? Yeah. Okay. So she's like uh, preparing a body for a service uh, of an old lady, and. This part was really cool. Like, what do you, you think about this part? This was cool because, um, like, Johnny is a character that, like, is always around dead bodies. So, very much like, and this is kind of a, a trope of people in that, uh, like, I've known some people that are into that business. And then, like, movies and TV shows about people in, who work in funeral homes and, like, make up the bodies. You hear a lot of stories about them, like, having visions or dreams of seeing these people seeing dead people all the time right and it's interesting and that was kind of a cool part of this is that so rachel comes and it's like oh hey rachel and it's like oh i must be dreaming because like Like you don't look yeah you're dead and you don't look like rachel and it's like just like the woman i'm working on it's like you know but it's cool i see people all the time i saw i saw elvis once i saw um she kind of lists off a a couple of different people she's like yeah i saw so and so the other day um right so this is obviously a dream but keep talking what's going on well and this is one of those things um i was kind of wondering about this because like how does johnny know she's dead if uh like she never i assume she was never like pronounced dead by anybody and they never found her body right (laughs) because her body was found in the in the riverbed. River. Yeah, but I I mean I guess they assumed because she had disappeared for a couple of days, maybe. Yeah, maybe she maybe, just assumed. Maybe because Johnny works in the industry, Johnny was like, Well Well, and also maybe because she has like the the marks, marks on, on her, her neck and her eyes and stuff, so she knows, Oh, this is like my vision of what happened. Like maybe she's a missing person and Johnny's just like, This is my brain coming up with uh the like worst case scenario. Yeah. You know, she's she was strangled to death or whatever. And I'm just talking to a fictional person in my head right now. So, yeah, like Johnny is, we find out she's Aunt Johnny. So she's like um, an older woman who um, we assume is her actual aunt. I don't know if she's actually her aunt or Or she just calls her aunt. Yeah. But But, um, she, she's just like talking to herself. She thinks she's talking to herself where she's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's me, Rachel. She's like, you're sure you are. And then like. But even she says, like, she looks at uh, her and she goes, you're not Rachel. And then she's like, yeah, I am. She's like, huh. Like, your eyes are all, like, fucked up or whatever and stuff. So, it was a real, like, uh, it's it's weird because, like, Johnny thinks she's hallucinating. But also, there is, like, a, a bit of, like, well, how would she... Why would she hallucinate a not real her or whatever yeah. kind of thing? I do want to say one thing I liked about this scene too was attention to detail of as far as like, so she, Johnny really does feel like she's hallucinating. 
and so she, and she's talking, but she's just going about her work and like it's really detailed as far as like oh yeah, what what an actual mortician would do yeah because they like they were like glue the eyes shut and like they it was really I was like oh whoa yeah. like this is I really liked, cool they actually show like she's working on specifically this old lady's eyes that has passed and she like puts contact lens in or like a lens that covers her eyeball and yeah. then like glues her eyes eyelids shut and then she like takes a a needle of, of some kind of solution and fills up the sockets around her eyes and the way that they show them like sunken in before and then after the needle pulls out and the solutions in there they're all like puffy and normal yeah looking and so like it gives them a more real effect i'm like oh that's cool and so uh yeah this is like a cool way to i don't know show like show that show it it's not super gra- it doesn't seem weird or like gross or anything in this because probably because it's black and white too but um but yeah, like, and also what's going on around it is, oh, I'm talking to myself and it's kind of like funny, but like awkward or something because she yeah. would be talking to a dead person or whatever. So um, Rachel basically is like, come on, we have to like go. I need to show you like where I, where I woke up. And she's like, oh, okay, sure, sure. And then she's like, uh, you know, let's take my mini. And she's like, actually, let's take that. Let's make it a Camaro because she thinks she's hallucinating. And she's like, come on. And she's like snapping her fingers like Camaro. Come on, Camaro. Camaro. Like, <laughs> and she's like, oh well, it's whatever. And so they and she even says, like, like, why don't you drive on, Johnny? She's like, of course. Like, why who else would drive or whatever? You know, like, cause you're a dead ghost or whatever, you know, and you're in my imagination. So uh basically Rachel leads her like th- this comic introduces a lot of people throughout it, so it jumps around a little bit, but basically she takes her to the where she woke up in the riverbed. And Johnny kind of has like a mental breakdown uh, and realizes, oh, shit, like you are real. Like, and, and like, this is where your body was kind of thing. And um, they, they have like a good cry there, basically. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then, uh, but the, what happens before that is uh, we get, this little girl is introduced and her name's Zoe. And uh, she's an interesting character. Uh, oh, real quick. I'm sorry. I want to mention because I don't know if this plays a part later, but I did think it was interesting to the story. Mm-hmm. When the place they go to is like you know deep in the forest, and then there's a hill, and then down into the riverbed. Um, but specifically, they call they call out. She's they they said we're going to Fireside Hill, uh-huh. and I you know I was like whatever that doesn't make you know this, and but then Johnny specifically is like oh yeah, it's called that because there were like a hundred like. The, Oh, yeah, years ago in this witches. town they burn that's why i thought oh maybe it is some maybe there's some supernatural because a hundred years ago or whatever they burn or they burn years and years ago they burned like a hundred young women here because they thought they were witches or whatever right and so that's why i thought oh maybe there's some supernatural element to this because of that now that really doesn't play i would say to the rest of this per se but i don't know if it's going to come back in the future i'll i'll, I'll let you, you want me to spoil it or do you Oh, now, now I'm not going. No, 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 never mind. Never mind. I don't want to spoil anything. anything. <laughs> I want to keep reading, so. Yeah. Well, and, and like John liked this a lot, so we're, we're probably going to read more of this. And, or he might do it on his own. And, and uh, Maybe I'll just give you the uh, uh, follow-up on the rest of the series. Be like, yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Or, Please read it. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So anyway, we, we introduced this little girl named Zoe who's about, I don't know, nine, something like that. Eight or nine. And she's at uh, a house by herself. And... um she like wakes up and she like goes to get some milk out of the fridge and she's drinking it. And all of a sudden there's like that mysterious woman again, the one who was jogging before. And she's like standing in her kitchen. She's like, ah, oh, who are you? Like, what are you doing in my house? And she doesn't say anything to her at all. And she just stares at her and then she does a smile. And then like, she's like and then it, yeah, that's when it like cuts away. Yeah. She's so, like, like, you probably shouldn't be here. My sister's going to be home. And it cuts. Yeah. And it cuts to like back to Johnny before they found the spot in the riverbed or whatever. So, um yeah basically uh now that johnny knows she's like real or whatever she's like oh my god what the fuck and then we cut back to zoe and now her sister comes back home and is like what are you doing you little puke or whatever you know she's like being a a normal uh teenager to a little kid were you spying on me and my boyfriend yeah like whatever we do with whatever i do with ricky is none of your business or whatever and then like She's like, you drank all the milk? God, you look turd. Yeah, and then like, and then before anything else happens, Zoe smashes her over the head with a, with a, I'm assuming a cast iron. It's like a cast iron fan. Yeah. Um, and then keeps, like, or hits her once, and then like that knocks her out, 
And then she takes some very, very nonchalantly takes some plastic wrap and uh, puts it over her sister's face and strength and the, like basically suffocates her to death with that. I really like how he drew that because like you, you wrapped it around and then obviously you could tell she's breathing because it like it forms in on her eye sockets and her mouth a bit. It was yeah. really cool looking. Yeah, and like and then she just sits there as her sister's like rrr, 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 you know, and then like she's just like drinking some milk or whatever, like nonchalantly. I'm gonna drink the rest of my milk. Yeah. Sister. And lets her sister suffocate to death. And that's like how issue two ends. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with this girl? And so yeah, this nine-year-old child. Yeah, this is super creepy. <laughs> um, so now that uh, Johnny and um, Rachel like have like, we're ra- basically Rachel's convinced Johnny like I'm real. She's like, okay, I'm gonna go talk to Jet and finally figure this out. So she goes to the club where Jet is a bassist in a jazz band, which I <laughs> thought was fun. And um, yeah, she she like goes in and everybody's like kind of. It's weird, like like I said, everybody kind of recognizes her, but doesn't recognize her. Like people are like, "You, do I know you?" Or you seem really familiar, but you're not you, you know, kind of thing. And um, basically, uh, right away, like she she's at the club, and like people are kind of like hitting on her. Like the bartender's kind of like, "What's going on? Pretty beautiful. You have a different look because she's got like bloodshot eyes and shit." So it looks basically people think she's like some weird goth girl, uh, yeah. and then like that's what that's how everybody kind of thinks about her. And then, uh, and they're like, what happened to your neck? Like, is that some kind of like fashion statement or something, you know? And then like, um, right away she's like, uh, she drinks some alcohol and then she's like, oh, I'm going to throw up like right now. She goes to throw up in the bathroom and she like throws up a piece of rope, which is really concerning. Yeah. It's like, (laughs) I don't know if, uh, that was, you know, I, I was thinking like, don't touch it, like save it because evidence or whatever, but like. She just like throws it away, I think, or washes it down the sink or something. So, but there's, um, I don't know. They don't actually don't show what she does with it. I don't know if she like saves it or anything. But then, as she's doing that and like washing on her mouth, some woman walks in with like a, a necklace, and uh, she's like, "Would you mind uh, help me put this on?" Yeah, which I thought was gross. Like, like she just threw up, and she was kind of like washing out her mouth or whatever with, with her hands, and then like. The lady's like, can you wash? Can you like do this? And then she's like, sure. And then she's like putting her gross like throw up hands on her on her. I'm on her sure necklace. she finished washing. I'm sure she did, but it was interesting. I just thought it was funny. But they don't show her washing or drying her hands. That's off, true. So. It's also the time we're living in, so maybe that we're a little extra like wash her hands. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, she helps her. This woman put a necklace on, and um, she's like, oh, it's from my fiance. We're getting married on Sunday. And then like. And me and John thought this was funny, but like, and John pointed this out. I'm like, totally. But basically, she like brushes against her back and has like a, a dead zone moment. With if you don't know dead zone, it's a Stephen King book where this guy like when like, he touches people, when he touches people, he knows like what's gonna happen in their future as far as like they might die or whatever. And so basically, he touches, she touches this woman, and she's like, oh my god. Yeah. You're gonna die. You're not gonna get married. Yeah, you're not gonna get married. Yeah, like I'm so sorry. Like, you know, you're not. And she's like, What'd you say to me? He's like, I'm no, I'm just telling you. He's like, You're a terrible person. It's like, like, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. Yeah. And she's like, You'll be dead soon. <laughs> like it's like, holy shit. He's like, you gotta say it in a walking voice though. Like, ah, ah. Uh, you you're not getting married. You're not gonna make it to you're your wedding. Be dead soon. <laughs> in the dead zone. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but yeah, basically she has like a dead zone moment where she freaks out and freaks this lady out. Um, and she even says like, your wedding bed will be a shallow grave. Your lungs will f- full of mud. And so um, that kind of, I didn't realize this uh, until we started talking about it. But like, there's like a foreshadowing of what happens to the husband later on. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, she, she like uh, basically runs out you know, all scared, goes back to her husband who's sitting down. And now like, she's like, uh, he's like, Oh, what's going on? You don't like it. And he, she's like, it's fine. It's fine. I just need a drink. And he's like, well, you're shaking. Like, are you having second thoughts about our wedding? And he gets all like <laughs> insecure. So it's pretty weird. And then she like, she's like, no, I just need a drink. Just go get me a drink and shut up or whatever. He's like, okay. So he goes to the bar and as he's at the bar, the mysterious woman is at the bar mm-hmm. and starts talking to him. And she, it's the woman from who was jogging before and the one who talked to Zoe. So obviously this lady is putting some things in motion uh, throughout this whole story. 
setting up all these characters for the for the future, I guess. So um she starts talking to him and she's like, Look at look at her, like she's very pretty, like almost too pretty for you, like someone of your caliber. Like I bet she gets hit on all the time. And she starts like trying to like put doubt in his mind of their relationship. And then like she's like, Look at her right now, she's laughing at that guy. And like it cuts back to her and she's just talking to the waiter who's like, Would you like a drink, ma'am? And she's like, No, my husband's giving me one or my fiance's giving me one. He's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's it. Like <laughs> like there was nothing between them, but he's like pissed off and then he brings drinks back he's like like are you happy now like you got your drink or whatever and yeah he like sets it down all frustrated and just like and he's like staring so like angrily angrily at her yeah hair. like 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 very mad at her for some reason we don't know why but uh but like, we know why but she doesn't know why and so um then finally rachel gets to talk to jet like they have like a, a, a break in their set or whatever and every time you say jet it- I keep thinking of the Paul McCartney song in my head. You're like, Jen. I'm like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> oh, man. <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I hope she's not playing that. She says she's playing jazz, so that's at least cooler or that's more true. sophisticated than that. But she does look like she's having a fun time playing some of that jazz bass. Yeah, she's slapping so, the bass. She's slapping the bass. <laughs> <laughs> so while she's still like uh, playing, they like catch eyes in this in this little break, and they're like, like I'll talk to you later or whatever, you know, kind of thing. And then uh, it, it looked like Jet recognized her, but still was kind of like, oh, it, it is her. But like, she's, something's, weird. something's weird. But like, yeah, th- that's for sure Rachel, I guess. And so then Rachel like turns around and sees that woman who was uh, like woke her up or whatever. The mysterious woman. And uh, she sees her going up the sta- the back stairway. And, and this was interesting. I missed this and i should have known it because he puts her in different clothes than rachel but the mysterious woman looks like rachel with a ponytail so sometimes i would get them confused if i wasn't paying full attention like a hundred percent because rachel has a black has on like you know like a a black jacket and black clothes and this mysterious woman who looks like rachel has a white like some kind of white hoodie or something. yeah yeah and so i think well i think it's like a what are those called? Yeah, she had like a hoodie, and she also has white underneath that, like for or like at least cream colored colored clothing. And so, like at first, I for, I missed like wait a second, but I had to like go back and read it. But it basically, this uh, this woman who this mysterious woman who looks like Rachel goes up the stairs. Rachel follows her to the roof, and like she's looking out. And she's like, "Hello, like are you, what's going on? Like who are you?" Kind of thing. And then she starts looking um like out and she sees like a fire starting in the distance she's like oh shit what's that and then she looks to the side and there's the lady that she was looking for is standing on another building on another building so i was yeah. like wait a second how the fuck did you get to the other building across the street yeah this is where i really was starting to question i was like well wait a minute what is she i was like is it a witch is it soup is it supernatural right is it a, you know a figment of her imagination is it a like is it I also because they look similar. I thought for a second to in part. Well, I've, I'm some piecing it all together, obviously. But I thought, whoa, is that like her spirit that's like right. watching over things? Like it's, right. I, I really, you know, it's hard to tell exactly. Right. And it's it's interesting because it is like a mystery. Like who is this person? And I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't remember when he like actually tells you who or what she is. But it definitely is revealed in the next, maybe the next story arc or two or two. I can't remember. It, it was like, oh. You know who she is before the end of the series or whatever. Because yeah, yeah, I think the main I point with. of this book is trying to find out who the killer of Rachel was. Yeah. Like, like who is this serial killer? Because they also mentioned later on that like there was bodies underneath her. Yeah, she when she's explaining how like she woke up and like got out of there, she's like she only got her footing because she ran like as she was digging. She didn't realize she was face down, and she thought she was digging up, but she was digging down, and then she ran into another body. And was able to like get leverage and push herself and up. up. Yeah, that, yeah, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, that's super creepy. So that this there is a person who is killing multiple women, and they're a serial, serial killer in the town, and uh, that's like the main point of this story, like the the thread that goes through it. You know, besides everything else, <laughs> uh, besides all the other story arcs or whatever. But that's the main like thrust. It's like the the big bad or whatever. Like if you're thinking Buffy seasons or something, it's like there's a big bad and there's many stories on the way that get you to the big bad or whatever. But, um, so yeah, she's standing on the roof and looking at this uh, mysterious woman on fire. another roof and a fire happening. 
And then that woman kind of turns to her and like smiles in a very creepy way. And then you hear slam and the, and Rachel turns around and this body is rolling down a solar panel that was right behind her and smashes into her and they both fly off the roof. And, uh, we don't know exactly what's going on, but it's, at first you're like, wait, who, what body was that? But then it's, as they're falling, you see it was the girl with the necklace and then they both fall and Rachel slams into a car and the second body lands on the ground or the girl who had the necklace lands on the ground next to her. And uh, you just see, and he, I like the way, he, cause even in all it's all black and white, like the, you can see like there's a pool of blood coming out from around her head where it hit the yeah, paper. It's it was very obvious she is dead. Very, yeah. Yeah. And so, and also we should say that girl's name is Natalie, Natalie. and she actually comes back into play a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so Natalie fell and died like officially. Um, and someone threw her off the roof basically onto that solar panel and accidentally, I don't know if they accidentally killed Rachel as well, or if it was just, yeah, I don't know if, if they're it was on purpose Rachel or if it was on accident. I don't know. But, uh, both of them are dead in quotation marks, uh, according to the comic. And then we see the guy who threw Natalie off was the husband and he looks over, he's got like a weird, I, I thought Terry Moore must have for sure like looked at panel or like uh, scenes from The Shining, for the way that he kind of looks like yeah. he's got he's got baldness kind of like Jack Nicholson and he's got this like like this face that just looks crazy like dead eyed and like I can see that yeah like wild and he just looks over at her and she like looks at him and like acknowledges uh, he looks over at the mysterious woman on the other building and she acknowledges and then. We cut to the house that's on fire, and we see that it's Zoe's house on fire. And she's like, you know, like we said, a nine-year-old girl. So she lit her house on fire and is now shoving the sister's body into a car. She's using a broom to, like, li- you know, like... Lift the, the trunk lid. Lift the trunk lid down or, or, like, put the trunk lid down and then, like, also using it to, like, hit the gas pedal on the car. And she's driving this body in a car somewhere. somewhere. We don't know where. And that's how the issue ends. <laughs> so, like, now Rachel's dead again, and this other lady, Natalie, is dead, and then Zoe it, is on some murder spree. Yeah, what's something's going, going on there? <laughs> yeah. And so this 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 has a really good, um, like, uh, like cliffhanger on each issue. And it and it's just built. It's really building and building. Like it gets more intense and crazy as it goes along. I love it. Yeah. And it, it like it just makes you want to read more. And Terry Moore's writing is so good that like, like I re- I think I read this whole trade in like a half hour. It was just like, bam, bam, bam. I'm like, oh man, this is like so solid, so tight. Everything's great. All the art makes sense. All the you know everything. You, like there were little things like, oh maybe I have to go back because I oh, I was reading too fast because it was flowing so well. And like maybe I wasn't 100 percent paying attention on some things. But like then I was like, oh okay, I get what exactly what I was going for. So most of that's my fault, but. So issue four starts basically right after that. Uh, Jet and Johnny are like they they meet up at the hospital or the, I don't know if it's the morgue. I, guess. I think it's like the city morgue. The city it's morgue. Not the, it's not the mortuary where she works at. It's just like it's like, like the like, county the, morgue. Yeah. Or and so um, where they first take bodies, obviously. Yeah. And so they're like, oh my god, like Jet's crying, and they're like, is it true, Rachel? Really? And so Johnny like gets here and she's like, is it true? And she's like, oh, I knew it. My visions were so strong tonight. So. Now she thinks that was all visions again, all that stuff that happened in issue two with uh, Rachel. Yeah, and she's like, I must have known like how to how to like foreshadowing or some shit. And so uh, then then we see they go they go in and this guy named Earl I guess is like the the main mortician there, or the I don't know what they call him one of the 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 more I guess the around. yeah who the corner there you go there you go that's what the word is i know i was looking for the who's the guy that goes to the crime scene and picks up the corner so i don't know if this is the actual corner if he's like a helper or something but um because they say like dr woodward's not in but earl is or something so i don't know if earl is just (laughs) the night corner or yeah he's the night shift yeah he's the night shift so you always know that's creepy and earl looks kind of creepy in this yeah he kind of he makes me think of the so you're gonna be like well he's not creepy he kind of reminded me of the goon a little bit in his look no, the goon has... Yeah, he's like a fatter goon. Yeah. He's like the goon without muscle. So he's got like... And he's got glasses too. But like, he definitely has like a... Um, he's bald. And he's like got a big kind presence. Big, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He just... He looks like like an old school strong man. Like from an old movie where they thought like all fat people are extremely strong underneath all that fat <laughs> or whatever. And so like, like he should be wearing one of those like 
strong man that one piece or whatever. Yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. And uh, and have like those big round dumbbells in his hands. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so basically, this guy Earl's like, uh, I mean, it's not pretty. She fell five stories, and uh, they're like, just shut the fuck up and let us see her. So they, you know, he lets them go in, and they remove the. I thought I was like, man, she must look all fucked up. But then she, they remove the like cloth, and she doesn't look that bad. No, she. But yeah, you know, fine. It's just her face or whatever and it looks normal. And then, but they don't really show like the rest of her body. And then they're like, "Can we have a minute, Earl?" And then as he's walking out, you see like there's a shot of them like talking to each other, and then you see her eyes open like next to them and then she like sits up she's like oh johnny and they're like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> like uh i thought this was funny like uh, jet says mother mary joseph and the donkey <laughs> like, <laughs> like what the hell's going on and then uh we see like basically uh she it's weird because apparently like the spirit that was in like came into her at the beginning can also leave the body or something because like she burps and that it shows like the spirit essence coming out of her and then the body falls flat and then it goes back in or whatever. So it's like basically she, her body is dead, but there is a, something inhabiting her. Whether it's Rachel's spirit or not, we don't know. But there's someone. She, it has Rachel's memories. It has Rachel's stuff. I don't know. What are you hitting at over there? You I'm not hinting Are either. you giving me too much information? I'm not giving you. No, I'm saying that's that's the mystery. Right? We don't mystery. know what this is. So. Mm-hmm. Well, you said we don't know if it's for. I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm reading too much into it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually not. I'm not trying to suggest too much there. That's I'm right. just saying, like, Better. like we don't understand what this thing is. Like, is it Rachel's spirit or is it something else? We don't know. And so, um, basically, she's able to like now talk to Johnny and Jet, and she's like, "I'm not dead. Like, what's going on? I just remember like being at your show. What happened?" And they're like, "You fell five stories." And she's like, "Well, what happened to the other lady?" Because then she starts to remember, like, oh, there was a there was a lady that you know fell off the solar panel, or was thrown off the solar panel, and it hit me. And then uh, and they're they're like, what other lady? And they're like, it was just you that fell. And they're like, no, like there was another lady. And then we cut to that other lady, Natalie, who was uh, dead on the ground for sure in the last issue because blood was pouring out of her head. Her husband is like now lifting her up over his shoulder in the middle of the woods on this dry riverbed and he's going to try to bury the body in the same spot that rachel was uh buried and so we're like oh is he like the serial killer or something you know but i mean i was talking to john about this and i think um everything that happens in this is pretty much um like with with all these people, they're not doing it under their own will no no i'm pretty sure it's the woman it's, it's the, the one it's a mysterious woman. woman who looks like rachel is appearing at all these scenes and causing all these people to do bad stuff. So yeah. like Zoe wasn't going to kill her sister beforehand, but now, now Zoe is a murder and same with this guy. Yeah. He might've been insecure about their marriage or something, but like, but yeah, I don't think, I don't think this was ever. Yeah. Like what actually, it was part of the characters until. Yes. Until this lady like corrupts him or, or takes him over. Cause he is under some kind of trance. Cause even he's like, wait, what, what's going on? Where am I later? And like, and then we see like, Oh, he wasn't like fully aware of what was going on, but he starts to try to bury her. And as he does, he looks over and he hears like a, he's like, what? And then there's like a snake that comes out of nowhere. And then the snake like hisses at this him. Is super creepy. It's really weird. And then it like goes in her mouth. Goes in Natalie's dead mouth. And, and all the way. Like, it, it goes yeah. all the way in and disappears. Yeah, like, it disappears in down her throat. And you're like, what the fuck? And then he's, like, trying to, like, suffocate her and, like, finish his job or whatever. Whatever he was supposed to do. So he, like, buries her. Kind of, like, half buries her in the ground. Some of her arms and legs are still sticking out. And goes back to his car. And as he's going back to his car... Uh, he's like packing up and then another car he sees, he's like, what the fuck? And it's like this weaving car and it runs into his car and then it ends up being Zoe. She like comes out of the, of the driver's seat. And she's like, can you help me with this? And he's like, oh, I guess so like he's all out of it. And she said, yeah, this body's not going to bury itself. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, they both pick up uh, Zoe's sister and they start taking her down there as well. Yeah. They take her down there and then they like, uh, like bury her. And as, um they're doing that like he's like oh my god like what's going on like it's like he wakes up or something and zoe's like i have to go home mister um thanks for helping me and and he's like what what have i done what happened and then she zoe like smashes 
I don't know if it's a rock. I think it's a rock. Okay, a rock on his head and, like, kills him, basically. And, like, this is the part that I thought, I thought was, like, um, foreshadowing. Yeah. She, like, shoves mud in his mouth as he's, like, halfway unconscious and bleeding out of his head. Um, and probably has, like, some sort of, uh, like, super concussion or he- blood hemorrhage in his brain. Yeah. Um, and, like, she shoves mud in his mouth and, like, so he'll suffocate, basically. I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> super fucked up. And she just let- leaves him there to die. Then, like, she runs into um, that mysterious woman again. And she's like, why are you making me do bad things? And uh, she's like, I never want you to come back. And, she- and the mysterious lady's like, Never's a long time. What if you need me again? And she's like, I'll never need you again. And she like just smiles at her. And so like Zoe and then she disappears. So Zoe's like, Am I crazy? What's going on? Yeah. She seems more in it or like in, in herself than or more aware than the husband was. Definitely. Because he seemed like he was in some kind of trance the whole time. Whereas Zoe's like, I know what's going on, but it seems like uh this is like uh like a dream or something or like, like I'm doing these bad things, but it's not me. And I know that kind of thing. So, uh, ish, and that's the end of that issue. Issue five starts out. Su- or it's just like a super fucked up issue. I'll say that. Like, I don't know what you thought. Oh yeah. No, this was definitely like the creepiest issue of them also were. Yeah. So the beginning of issue five, or I guess the end of issue four was, um, aunt Johnny and jet sneak Rachel out, uh, from under the eyes of Earl, I guess, you know, and, um, and they, they brought her back to Aunt Johnny's place where she's been sleeping for, like, we find out two days. Two days, yeah. And, like, it, it was interesting. Like, all these flies are in the room. So I'm like, is her body dead and, like, still stinking? Or how does that work or whatever? Because it makes it seem like the flies are there. But the flies are also dying in the room. So Yeah, they, they do that a couple times because I think earlier on she, she looked like she slept all day at one point. The cat hisses at her. They go to the house. You know, actually, that makes sense. Maybe the flies are scared of her, too. And they're like, because they're like hitting themselves on the window. Yeah. I was like, maybe they're like committing suicide trying to get out of the room. And so they go to, to this house and the, like, the the family dog of, I guess it's on Johnny's dog or whatever. Yeah, is yeah. like, hey, and the dog kind of goes up to her and starts sniffing her. And then it's kind of like starts, I don't, it doesn't really bark, but kind of like whimpers. Like, yes, uh, like uh, like, um, I don't know about you, actually. Kind of like a dog would do. <laughs> and, and like, yeah, I thought it was interesting. Dog, the way that he is very much like a dog wouldn't necessarily growl or whatever. He would just be like scared. Whereas a cat would be like, <sighs> like, I don't know. It kind of makes sense with like death or whatever kind of thing. Yeah. Like a dog would be sad. Whereas a, uh, a cat would be like, I am Satan. <laughs> <laughs> whatever cats are like, right? I don't know. Egypt. Right, <laughs> that's some some. I saw that in the Mummy. It must be true. I'm assuming it's true. Probably. Um, but anyway, so yeah, she's at Johnny's house, and Johnny and like is now like a cuss. Like now she believes. Okay, Rachel's alive, but how alive? Like it doesn't make any sense biologically, but there must be some biological reason. Because Johnny, they say later that Johnny's like an atheist, and so like she believes in science, and so she's saying like, okay. There must be a reason for this scientifically. Like they say even that her pulse is like one beat or one six beats a minute or something yeah. like that. Like, so she, she has signs of life, but they're not enough to actually be alive kind of thing. So and unlike, you know, other comics where they're like, like we kept your breathing rate so low, like they thought you were dead, but then we brought you back or whatever. This is like, this is not, yeah, yeah it's not like that. So. No one understands it, but basically, and she says like, oh, you were asleep for like 36 hours or whatever, like, and no one would have known that you were alive the whole time. And like, I tried to wake you up and you wouldn't wake up. So yeah, they're, they're having dinner and they're going to have a guest. And she's like, why did you tell me? She's like, I did, but <laughs> you, you would not wake get up. up. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, and I think basically what it is, is she has to like, she has to have time to heal from her wounds. That's what I assumed it was something like that. Yeah. It's like, she has to have, have regeneration time, even though she's still alive. Her body still suffers like wounds, and so she needs like healing yeah. time for that or whatever. And it's this, like a slow Wolverine. And this is a cool process of of her being that too. So like she goes outside, and I guess because Jet's pulling up, yeah. And they they talking outside for a sec, and she's still wearing like her spaghetti strap, sp- shirt yeah, and everything, and like pants. And and Jet comes over, and she's in like a coat and like a beanie. It's obviously cold and snowing outside. Yeah. And Jet's like, "Aren't you cold?" And she's like, "No." 
Yeah, no, it's fine. And yeah, like, so this just, is weird. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. But obviously, yeah, because there's there's something going on with her. She's not. She is. She is a, a alive and dead at the same time. She is undead. She is something. It's yeah. Very. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, this is also where we see like how good of friends Jet and her are. Because oh. she's like, why don't you like, you know, you have to tell me everything or whatever. Like, like tell me what you're going through. Because uh, Rachel's kind of been hiding. Obviously, she hasn't told anyone that I was murdered. She just said she was. She woke up in this ditch or whatever. But like, yeah. she hasn't said like I'm having weird fucking dreams of being strangled by some dude in a mask and all this kind of stuff like that. And like, also, I haven't told anybody about seeing this lady uh, that's mysteriously appearing whenever people die or go crazy or whatever and so uh jet's like you're not telling me everything like you have to you know and then she like raises her pinky and is like please you have to tell me and then we cut back to them being kids and they had like they're like pinky swear best friends forever thick or thin whatever old and gray friends for life and the grave and afterlife or yeah whatever. i think this is yeah a cute little one thing i have to say that i really like about terry moore's storytelling he tells emotional connections with people so well, or characters so well. Yeah. Um, Motor Girl hit her connection um, with the um, oh, what's the what's the gorilla name? I feel bad now. Oh, I don't remember. I'll okay, well, her connection with the main with her main with gorilla, gorilla that she sees, like it's so heartfelt, and especially like when you find out the the main part there, and then this one, you know, like you, she's talking about Jet the entire time, and then. They finally have this like really like deep connection moment, and then, like it's just a little thing. It's like back when they were kids or whatever. But it's just like the way that he tells us, like, right? Oh man, like well, I really you feel knew, these characters. Yeah, you knew they were like a good, they were good friends. But like this show's like, no, we were like real tight back in the day. We've been together forever, pretty yeah. much since we were little kids playing on a play. I just set. appreciate that in storytelling. It, you know, it's, yeah, it's cool. He, he does a really good job of that. Yeah, and so and then they're like, what? Kind of, I like this. I uh, thought it was funny. She's like. What kind of kids make a pact to the afterlife? <laughs> you know, but uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but the, there is something to that. Later, more later. foreshadowing, perhaps. More, this is definitely foreshadowing. So, um, yeah. Uh, basically, she's like, so you're dead, but you're not dead. That's weird. So, like, tell me what's, what you feel, what's going on. Like, what did you go through? And she's like, she starts to tell her like, what it was like to wake up. And this is where we kind of already spoiled it, but... Like, where she said, like, you know, I thought it wasn't really happening. You know, I thought it was a nightmare that I couldn't wake up. I tried to scream, but there was dirt in my throat, and it was filling my lungs and stomach, which I thought was super, like, creepy and descriptive. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, like, it was consuming me, and I, it was like I was being swallowed. And then she finally got some leverage, and it was another body that was below her, and she was able to push herself up. And she's like, oh, my God. And so she said, like, did you, like did you vomit or whatever? She's like, yeah, I had to like throw up all this dirt and everything. And it was super fucked up. And so then they're like, Oh, well it's time to eat. Like, <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> like, Ooh, who's hungry. And so, uh, yeah, like then, then we see someone else was invited over and that dude's name was Dr. Seaman. This dude is fucking creepy. I don't know if, I mean, I'm assuming Terry Moore did that on purpose, like naming him that. And then also him being super creepy and weird. He, I don't know, he's, he could be like a Mr. Rogers kind of guy, but Mr. Rogers, the way that people kind of funnily say, and he was a serial killer or something, you know, because yeah. he's so nice. But, yeah, like, basically, Dr. Seaman is over there to, uh, he's like, I wanted to meet you, like, once Johnny told me about this. And so, yeah, basically, he signed the, Johnny, I guess, worked magic behind the scenes at the hospital to get them to be able to legally take uh, the, body. Uh, the dead body. Yeah. <laughs> and so she told her, or she, she told Dr. Seaman um, that I guess technically what it, that she wasn't dead. Right. Cause he but, needed her. She needed him to play along. Yeah. And so he was like, okay, I'll sign the paperwork if I get to meet her. Yeah. So, so this is like the deal or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, he meets her and he basically says like, uh, like I find it so nice to meet you. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, the, you're the angel of death. And he, she's just like, uh, uh, okay. And like, we see that, like, we know, that's why I was saying, we don't know what she is because they're kind of alluded, like, maybe she is something different than Rachel. Cause this guy is saying like, like, you're not Rachel. 
you're the angel of death. And she's like, what? So that's why I was saying like, yeah. And it was weird because we don't they, know as the reader, is she actually Rachel or is this? Yeah. And they have a good conversation point here because, because Aunt Johnny, um, she uh, is very much like we already said, like, she's like, I believe in science. There's, so there's gotta be a way and a reason that you're alive because you have these small signs of life. And Dr. Seaman's like, well, yeah, there's a reason, but it's not that, you know, it's obviously has something to do with like a balance of like good and evil and death in life. And like, she's like, she's like the angel of death. And that's kind of alludes to like, is she, if she's the angel of death, who is the woman, the mysterious, mysterious woman, woman yeah. or are there roles reversed maybe or something like, yeah. So there's a lot, again, it's like, is this more of a supernatural thing then? Or right. it's a really cool, like they're, they're t- the way he's teasing things. Yes. And it's weird because as, as a reader, we know that that other person, the mysterious woman is real because she's been affecting other people. So yeah. like we know that it is supernatural, but the people in the town don't know, or the people that, kn- that are meeting her don't know about that person yet. So um, then we cut to uh, uh, Zoe and she's like at a, I oh, guess man. it's like the, the state like child care, child yeah, child services, child services yeah, and so they, I guess they picked Zoe up uh, after you know she killed, um, what's his face, or the, the the husband that killed his wife. Yeah, they said that like the ladies there and say it says that they found her I guess walking up to the the house that was burning down. They're like, do you live here? And she's like, she, apparently she was just like, uh, yeah. And they're like, oh my god, that was this that was poor crazy. child is traumatized. So it starts off with like them. I guess they've the child services have called this this uh, mother and father who are I guess go to caretakers for like foster parents. Um, they're, and they're so like, good. They yeah, always take the children. in. Thank you so much for taking the kids at such a short no- or for taking her at such a short notice. And they're like, yeah, no problem. And like, all right, well, let's just you know. And they even say like, oh, she's so precious because she like turns her head and she's got those big like doe eyes yeah. or whatever. And she's like, okay, well, Miss Boyle, why don't you come like sign the paperwork? And then the dad. Oh, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'll creepy. stay here with her. Yeah, and he's like, hello, Zoe. And he's got this fucked up, creepy face on him. Mm. He's like, you're cute. You're a cute one, aren't you? Like, we're not, we're going to have an understanding, right? Like, you're not going to fuss and, um, and you're going to listen to everything I do say. Do what I say, right? Yeah, and he's being super creepy. Oh, so creepy. And basically, they're showing, like, he is a pedophile and he fucks all these kids that get to stay with him mm-hmm. by the state. Uh, and the state doesn't know that. And then, uh, and then like he touches her and she goes, you're a bad man. Like you hurt children. He's like, you know, basically, uh, and he's like, you better not tell anyone what you said, spread, spreading lies or whatever. And then, uh, she sees behind him appear the mysterious woman. And he's, mm-hmm. she's like, she's like, um, mister, I have a, a secret friend who watches over me. And every time I see her, somebody dies. And he's like, no shit, where's your friend now, smart girl? And then, like, he's just like right behind you. And then it just shows him fly yeah, into like, the like, wall. Like, down the hallway yeah. into the wall. It was really cool. She, he's like, what the fuck? And then she, like, runs away, and he starts chasing her. And then he runs by his wife, and he's like, don't believe what she said. She's, he's a liar, because, like, if in case she says anything to anybody. And so she runs in the elevator, and this part was super fucked up, I thought. And it's like perfect example of like Terry Moore being able to do whatever he wants in this book because yeah. it's independent. But like he gets his head stuck in in an elevator door. Yeah, like he slips and he's trying to get in the elevator. So he's like crawling in, and he yeah he gets his head stuck as the doors are closing. Even though, the, and that's exactly how elevator doors work for sure. For sure. Well, <laughs> I'll you know they some could. doors if they're old enough don't have to don't have the the sensors on yeah. them. So. Uh, so I guess this is an old school door, but uh, we're going to believe that because it's such a good scene. Because it's such a good scene. And so Zoe is like, he's like, oh, shit, I'm stuck or whatever. And then they're like, Zoe, open the door. And Zoe looks at him and then pushes a button to the lower floor. And then he's like, wait, no, stop. And then you just see crunch and all this blood spurts out all over Zoe. And then it, the, the, you know, the elevator comes down. It's like, ding. And the door opens and it's her standing in a pool of blood with his head in the elevator. And then uh, she walks out. <laughs> and it's got bloody foot. I like the bloody footprints as she walks out the door. Yeah, super fucked up. And then uh, and then we're finally, we're on issue six. And uh, this one kind of, uh, this one had a lot of weird, creepy shit. But it, it starts off with they're back at the dinner. And Rachel's like, you know, basically, I'm I'm done. I don't want to talk to you anymore about this shit. And so uh, she's like, you know, it's my death. And, uh, and like, I don't want to, I don't want to be here anymore. And so basically jets like why don't we go 
and you show me what, where, where you were buried kind of thing. And so they leave with Johnny. Um, and then the doctor's like, oh, don't worry, I'll clean up here. And he has a like really creepy fucking yeah, so Miss America wave. They're uh, at Aunt Johnny's house, and they're like, okay, we're going to go to the scene. And Dr. Seaman's like, oh, yeah, I'll do the dishes and then see myself out. Y'all take care. It was, it was very, yeah. And they walk out, and he's, like, waving and smiling, and it looks yeah. super creepy. Super creepy. Then they cut cut to a woman walking on the street and it's natalie the woman who was murdered by her husband and he buried her but now she's she's walking around again yeah and she's covered in dirt again she was dead but now she's raised and this is what i could see why you thought maybe this specific spot has yeah like especially they were like there was a body there already so i was like maybe that's is that one of the old like witch bodies or or, or girls or is this is it and that's why i thought maybe this like like you know, like yeah, they said witches were burned here, so maybe it's supernatural or like Indian right. burial ground kind of thing. Right, but it seems like whenever someone's buried here, they at least rise or there's something like that. But she was also the woman who had the snake go down her throat, besides yes. the other people. So, uh, so yeah, she so she's walking, and this guy who like is a carpenter, I guess he has like a carpet van. He pulls over, he sees her walking, he's like, "Oh my god, ma'am, are you okay? Like, do you need? Are you in trouble? Like, do you need me to take you somewhere?" And she's like, uh, you know, yeah, take me, take me home in town. You know, he's like, oh, okay, do you need medical service? I was in, I was in the, uh, the army. Like, why don't you have a seat? And like, let me, let me look you over. Can check you for broken bones. And he starts like feeling her legs. I, I thought this was just going to go normal. Like the first one at first. And then I was like, hey, wait a minute. Is he being a creepy perv? I don't know if this dude was supposed to look like Gary Ridgeway. The, the oh, killer. Oh, yeah. But he totally looks. <laughs> he does look like, like Gary Ridgeway. Gary Ridgeway, the serial killer. A <laughs> little, little fatter. Uh, yeah. And yeah, a little like a fat Gary Ridge, Ridgeway, who, if y'all don't know, was the Green River Killer. You should. Was episode, I think, 15 or 16. Go or and listen to, like, if you have any interest in serial killers, go listen to that one because that is such a crazy story. Yeah. And it's a true crime. Yeah. Podcast, true so. crime. Yeah. So, but this dude totally looks like Gary Ridgeway. And uh, I know, and also we say John Ridgeway in that a lot. And I, I, it was wrong. I think uh, I just was here thinking of my friend John who's talking. And I don't know why we said John Ridgeway, but <laughs> Gary Ridgeway. Gary Ridgeway, yes. Um, but anyway, so uh, this guy's like, well, let me let me check you. Do you feel any pain here? He's like Anything feeling here? up her leg. How about here? And like, yeah, then like I was, I wasn't 100% because it's in black and white, but then. Like, I, I saw the line a little better, and it's like, oh, wow, his hand is between her legs. Yeah, so basically he's, like, touching her vagina or something. Or, or reaching, uh, yeah, reaching like feeling her up skirt. her leg, up her skirt. Yeah, well, because he says, like, how about here? here? There's, like, a pause. Yeah. That's why I'm like, oh, my God, like, he's being super oh. creepy and gross. But the cool thing was she looks at him, and she's all angry when he says here, and then she... Opens her mouth, and this fucking snake flies out of her. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. And, like, <laughs> and like bites his fucking face, and then he falls down a hill, and I'm assuming he's dead. And then the snake comes back and just uh, goes back in her. Yeah, it's, it's in her like mouth. it like curls up her leg, and then back on her, and then goes back in her mouth. <laughs> yeah, she's like, <laughs> and then burps, which is funny. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, so then um, Johnny and uh, Jet. And Rachel go to the spot where they found Rachel and Natalie. Or when Natalie was gone, no one knows who she was. But but Rachel's like, no, I swear there was a body there too of a girl that fell with me. So they go to this. Uh, to the, we're like, where where she fell off the roof of this jazz club. And um, while they're there, they hear something in the trash. And I think it was more like Rachel senses her. Yeah. Um, and she's like, basically, she sees. Or she knows Zoe's like hiding in this trash can. I think they're all kind of called to this moment or whatever in yeah. this area together. So Zoe is like uh, talking to Rachel, and then um, they're like, "What? What do you see?" And Zoe's like looking, and they see uh, like her head's turn, and everybody else is like, "What? What do you see?" And but but Rachel can actually see this mysterious woman, other than no one else can. Zoe, Zoe and Rachel, yeah. So they're like, wait, what? And she's like, that's that woman. Like, I know who she is. And so she starts talking to her, and she actually talks back. So um, she's like, you know, where's that girl that was here? Do you know? Like, can you understand me? And then the, the mysterious woman says, do you remember me? Do you? And she's like, remember, like, the roof? Is that what you mean? And she's like, like, usually you remember something. That, that ruins everything. 
Uh, but this time, like nothing, and it's it's now it's too late. And you're like, wait, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah, it was. Like, it, she was definitely almost like it was like riddles of like, like who are you? And she's like, what you don't remember? You should remember things. Yeah, it was very yeah. like whoa. Yeah, what it, is going it's on? like obviously there's some connection that I don't know if it's like in the past or what's going on. But she does like call her sister, so she says like, remember the snow sister when it starts to snow, and like, and this was weird too, like. As she says that her garb changes, like her what she's dressed in, the mysterious woman. Yeah, she, it looks like olden days. Yeah, she's got like a bonnet on now. And like and, and like kind of like a corset or something. Yeah, it's very odd looking. Yeah, and so we don't know. And then she disappears and they're like, What? So Rachel's like, That's weird. And they're like, like, what woman are you talking about? Like Johnny and Jet were and they're like, Didn't you see her? He's like, No. So like, whatever, let's go. And so then they're they're driving and uh it cuts away. To that creepy Doctor Seaman, who is now back at his house, he's like, "Hey, honey, I'm he walks home. in like, yeah, hey, honey, and uh, you won't believe it, but I finally met her. Like, she was dead yesterday, and, and now she's alive today. And like, Rachel's the answer to our prayers. And then like, we see a body sitting on a couch. Yeah, she dark. looks like the, the wife's just watching TV. Yeah, and like the hair's all scraggly though and shit. And then like, he turns on a light, and it's very clear that that woman has been sitting there. And he says. Someday soon we'll have a conversation, Sylvie. After 30 years, I will hear your sweet voice again. So his wife what has been dub? dead for yeah. 30 years. and uh, She's just been rotting here on the couch? Apparently, or he preserved her because he's, or, a, you know, or he's a mortician a or whatever. Yeah, I know, doctor. it's so creepy. So I don't know what's up with that guy, but he's <laughs> fucked up. And then we cut back to the car where uh, Aunt Johnny is driving Jet and Rachel and Zoe. And Zoe's kind of talking to Rachel in the back seat, and and she's like giving up some information finally. And Zoe's like, "Yeah, every time uh, I see that woman, somebody dies." And uh, but like, like you're nice, and I don't want you to die, so like you shouldn't be around me. And then um, she's like, well, "Why were you hiding from her?" And Zoe's like, "No, and like no one can hide from her because she's a witch. She's a witch, yeah." And then like right when she says that, Jet yells out, "Look out!" And like I don't know what was going on, maybe because it's snowing. Or yeah. something, and the road is slippery. But then we see like uh, it cuts to like just a crow flying off a building, like if there was a loud noise or something. And then we cut back to Rachel, and she's on the ground, and the snow's you know snowing. And what? And then she like sits up, and we see a piece of rebar is through her mid through her mid And she's like not really feeling pain or anything, so that's interesting. And then she sees the car is totally fucked up, and Johnny's on the ground. Um and she can't move. She's like, "Don't move me. I can't feel my legs." She, she pulls the the oh yeah. She pulls the rebar, rebar out of herself. out of herself and like walks over to them. And then like Johnny's like, "I can't feel my legs." And then she's like, "But go look, Jet. Like Jet. Jet's lost too much blood." And she looks, and Jet is sitting there, and like all this blood's pouring out. And basically, just like they, she's like, "Just don't let them burn me, Rachel." Like you know, because she she knows she's gonna die. Well, see, and this is what I didn't. She she was saying that and I thought cremation at first, but then I also wondered if it was any kind of reference to I think the witch is. stuff. I think it is. Obviously, okay. you know, they just said witch, and you know, yeah, don't let them burn. I, there's so many little things that are like in my brain going on. Yeah, but then I was, she was like, yeah, like maybe she's gonna die. Don't let them like cremate me because some people have that fear too. That's yeah, true. and then I thought this part was super creepy, but she's like, Ray, uh, uh, Jet's looking at Rachel, and she goes, Rachel nobody's waiting for me. And she's kind of looking in the middle distance. She's like, why isn't anybody waiting for, her? and then she dies. And then she's like, jet. And then like freaks out. Yeah. And like, you know, like her life is gone. Then we see a panel of like a four panel page. This is the last page of this, this series or this, uh, this volume. And we see jets body. She is now like, uh, dead on like, a the mortuary, I guess. And she's dead, dead, dead. And then the last panel is her eyes open up. And she, de- she also has a strangulation mark and her eyes are blood red or bloodshot red. So I, it's weird, like, how I'm not sure exactly how she has that because she didn't have that before. So uh, she know. did not have bloodshot eyes when they were talking. So I don't know if she just got that somehow or something. But, yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find that's, out. It's a mystery, folks. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of the issue or the, uh, volume. So, um, what did you think about that, John? Did you have anything you wanted to hit that we missed? No, not particularly. I think we hit all the main points other than like, 
No, I mean, we hit them all. I was going to say, the thing I was going to say is oh, his art is so good, but we did mention that. It was yes. such you solid art. It looks really nice. We can't say enough about his art and his storytelling and just the creepiness of this comic. Is, is yeah, the, high, and this one was super creepy. creepy. And yeah. So uh, what would you give this one, John? Well, I just want to say again with, with Terry Moore, after reading what I've read and now reading this one, is like he's this great te- storyteller, but he, I mean, he, the first one, we, we, he told like, a little bit more comedy, a little bit more um, uh, like sci-fi meets uh, like real world drama. Yeah. And this one was like some real world drama, but then like more super, uh, like supernatural. a little supernatural element maybe. It was cool. It was different enough yeah. to... Now that you say that, like all of his books have a different feel. Like I was telling you earlier, Strangers in Paradise has a uh, like espionage kind of thing. Yeah. Like politics and, you know, secret police or whatever kind of thing, or secret uh, organizations and stuff. And then this one has a supernatural drama. The other one, uh, Motor Girl, has a sci-fi drama. Then uh, Echo, his other series, has like a superhero kind of sci-fi feel to it. Also a drama. Uh, <laughs> he likes drama part, drama. but he well, mixes it up. There's a, there's a lot of comedy in Motor Girl, too. I really... Yes. Like. But, but that's the thing I'm just going to mention is like, that is... That is amazing storytelling when you can tell all these different types of tropes or or genres, genres of stories, but then but but still tell this really compelling story. Yeah. And I I just loved it. And like having so, like uh, he does a really good job of like having strong women without making them feel like uh, I'm just gonna make this person a strong woman and it's unbelievable and all this stuff. He's like no, like everybody feels right and correct. Everybody's doing what they should do. Yep. Yet, you know, on Johnny feels strong. Uh, uh, Rachel feels strong. Everybody, Jet feels strong. Like everybody's doing um, what you, you know, the, the characters feel real, you know, very realistic. None of the, none, nothing like uh, just making them super powered or making them special just because or whatever. Um, it doesn't seem like it should be like that or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. It's probably because they're his re- own creations, but see some people don't stick that landing so like he does a good job of like really making you care about the characters he builds the characters first and then like you understand where they're coming from and why they have their motivations and all that stuff so it just doesn't come out of nowhere kind of thing yeah so uh, what would you give this one john so i am a complete story guy i'm a guy who likes a solid ending and like a wrap-up feel make you feel good about everything so um I, I'm I'm gonna read the all the rest of this, and I want to know what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um. But just as, as a volume. Hey, well, that's what I'm saying. As a vo- I'm getting to, I'm getting to that. Is that well, I, I'm gonna reference the like people like most people's favorite Star Wars is is Empire. Mine is Return of the Jedi because I like the completion of a story. Right. So I'm gonna say this. It was fantastic, and I look forward to reading all the rest. I don't know how satisfied I'll be until I get that ending. So I'm gonna go with eight. Okay. Cool. Super solid. Yeah, I'm going to give this one an 8, too. It was just, like, really, really good. It set up a lot of good stuff, and uh, it had a really a really good tone. Like, it set a real good tone. And this is, like, a spooky book, a creepy book. It's perfect for October. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, there, there's... Pick this one up, folks. It's is great. Like, you can buy them on, on Comixology. If you have Unlimited, you can read the whole series for, I think it's, like, five ninety nine a month or whatever that Unlimited is. But, um, yeah, you can read the whole series in one go. All of them you can borrow. So definitely check that one out. If not, buy it from his website or your local comic book store because he needs support and they need support. Yeah, the con- and everybody in the comic book industry, especially right now. So yeah. it's a great way to support um, local local artists. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and, and maybe we'll be able to get him on a conversation here because I was telling John, he's actually a, a native Texan from Houston. So we might be able to. I want to see if we can finagle an interview or something like that. Yeah, that would be cool. We'll, we'll try to see. He's got a book coming out in December, so maybe we'll do something around there. But um, on that note, if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email us at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channel for exclusive content. We've got some great hardcover reviews. And all of this month, we've got our 13 comics of Halloween coming <laughs> out. So make sure you check out our special uh, mini episodes on those. Yes. And uh, and sorry if that laugh covered that up. But yeah, we're doing special Halloween episodes. And uh, we're doing only horror books for the rest of, of, of October for these uh, main podcasts. So next week, we're going to read Harrow County. Uh, which is a, I think it's a dark horse, um, spooky book. Um, 
by Colin Bunn. So I've heard lots of good things. Uh, should be extra creepy and whatnot because it's a Dark Horse book. And uh, yeah, on that note, we'll see you guys next time. On the next one. Bye. Well, folks, hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did and you'd like to follow us on social media, our Facebook is Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. And our Instagram is at Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. All one word. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more recommendations to add to your weekly pull list. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.